So, Dr. Fenn, one of the things that distinguishes us uh, from any other uh, Muslim sect and actually any other religious sect on the planet is the fact that we are the only people that have obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and held on tight to the will of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. So basically in the Quran, uh, God commands uh, mankind and states to them that if death approaches you, it's obligatory, it's mandatory uh, that you write a will. And we find also that uh, Moses, before he left in the books of the Jews and in the narrations and the traditions of the Jewish people, before he leaves, he leaves a will. And before each and every prophet and messenger left the planet, they left a will uh, in which they appointed after them uh, their successor. And even the Sunnis believe that the first caliphs that were after the Prophet Muhammad, Abu Bakr, Umar, uh, that they left before their death or on their deathbed, they instructed the Muslim nation or instructed their companions who would be their successor. So on, the, on Abu Bakr's deathbed, he appoints Umar. On Umar's deathbed, he appoints a committee um, to elect the next ruler who's going to be uh, after him. And so uh, the Prophet Muhammad, we believe, also uh, would have obeyed the command that came in the Quran that before he dies, he leaves a will, mm. as well as uh, the fact that we believe that the Prophet Muhammad is wiser, uh, more knowledgeable, uh, and is more concerned about the affairs of the Muslim nation uh, than anybody else. Uh, because after all, it was his nation. And so he, like the rest of the prophets and messengers, would have never left the earth without leaving a will in which he appoints and states very clearly who was going to inherit from him uh, his station. Uh, which is the leadership over the Muslim nation. Just like Jesus didn't leave until he appointed Simon Peter, uh, just like Moses didn't leave until he appointed Joshua, son of Nun, and uh, just like uh, you know uh, Solomon inherited from David, we would expect that there would also be an inheritor who would inherit from Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him and his family. And indeed, we find that uh, there is one tradition in which the Prophet Muhammad is mentioned as having attempted to write his will on his deathbed. And this is a famous hadith which is present in Sunni sources even, and it's called the Tragedy of Thursday. And so on the Thursday before the Prophet's death, a couple days before that, he gathers some of his companions, he's on his deathbed, he attempts to write a will. And when the narrators are talking about this event, they are crying. Uh, some of the narrators that, that mention this hadith, they cry and they say, what a tragedy it was on Thursday. It was horrible. And then he proceeds to state that the prophet was ill. He brought his companions in, his family members in, and he asks them to bring forward a pen and paper so that he can write down uh, that which if they held on to, they would never go astray. So uh, the Prophet wanted to write something and it was something that would guard the Muslim nation from ever having any clashes with each other, having disagreements with each other, and that would keep everybody on the right path. Mm. And uh, then there was some voices from the crowd, the narration states, um, that began to object. And one of them uh, in particular accused the Prophet Muhammad uh, in all rudeness and disbelief of hallucinating. Uh, they said, the verily the man is hallucinating and uh, uh, speaking nonsense. And so they prevented him from writing his will. And they said, we don't need it. 
we have the Qur'an, the Qur'an is enough for us. Mm. So the Prophet, uh, basically, he expelled everybody from his room. He was angry. He told everybody to leave after this uh, horrible act of disrespect. And after he knew what their intentions were, and their intentions was clearly to prevent him from writing down his successors. Right. And uh, then we have another narration and it is the only narration that is present in the books of all of the Muslims. There's only one. And in that tradition, in that narration, uh, we have uh, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, uh, writing down what were the contents of the will that the Prophet was wanting to write down, but he was unable to. And uh, the contents of it are as such. The Prophet, uh, he tells Ali ibn Abi Talib, uh, bring for me a, uh, you know, a uh, paper and a pen. And then Ali starts to write down what the Prophet says. And the Prophet dictates to Ali and says to him, verily after me, there will be 12 Imams. And after them, there will be 12 Mahdis. Mm -hmm. And you, O oh Ali, are the first of the 12 Imams. And then he starts to say that God named you uh, such and such and such and such and such and such, like the greater Farooq and, and uh, Al-Mahdi and, and, and the guided one and the greater distinguisher. And he starts listing off all of these titles that belong to Ali ibn Abi Talib. And then he says that when death comes to you, then it, it, you're supposed to dictate in your will that it's passed on to your son Al-Hasan. And when Al Hassan comes to die, he should dictate that his successor is, in his will, Imam Al Hussein. And Imam Al Hussein should pass it along to his son Ali Zayn al Abidin. So, first Ali ibn Abi Talib, mm -hmm. then his son Al Hassan. Al Hassan should pass it to his brother Al Hussein. Al Hussein should pass it to his son Ali Zayn al Abidin. Ali Zayn al Abidin should pass it to his son Muhammad al Barqar. Muhammad al-Bakr should pass it down to his son, Ja'far al-Sadiq. Ja'far al-Sadiq should pass it down to his son, Musa Qazim. Musa Qazim should pass it down to his son, Ali al-Rida. Ali al-Rida should pass it down to his son, Muhammad al-Jawad. Muhammad al-Jawad should pass it down to his son, Ali al-Hadi. Mm -hmm. Ali al-Hadi should pass it down to his son, Al-Hasan al-Askari. And then it states, and then al Hassan al-Askari should pass it down to his son, and he is the safeguarded from the family of Muhammad. And then he spells out his initials, uh, M-H-M-D, uh, Mim Ha, Mim Del, and that is Muhammad, the safeguarded from the family of Muhammad, Muhammad al-Mahdi, mm -hmm. uh, the twelfth Imam. And then it states, and after that, there will be twelve Mahdis, and... Uh, then it mentions the names of the first three Mahdi's and it states that if death comes to Muhammad al-Mahdi or the time comes for him to write his will and mention his successors, then he should pass on uh, the matter to Abdullah, Ahmad, and the third name is al-Mahdi. Right. Okay? Right. And so we believe that uh, we have lived uh, through the age of most of the Imams, and we believe that after the Prophet Muhammad's death, it was his will that Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib be the one who succeeds him, but the Muslim nation prevented that, and they appointed false rulers, mm -hmm. Abu Bakr, Umar, and Uthman, who were usurpers of the Caliphate. And we believe that eventually Ali ibn Abi Talib, uh, he came to power, but he was betrayed. And the same thing happens to the rest of his successors. Uh, the Muslim nation pushes away, disregards the will of the Prophet Muhammad, does not want to hold on to it except for a few true believers. And uh, the, uh, uh, you know, and Imam al Hassan is pushed away from his right as the successor of the Prophet. And he's not allowed to rule over the nation. And the same thing happens for Imam al Hussein. And each and every one of them is either poisoned or they're imprisoned and then, and then poisoned or assassinated or they're killed brutally and beheaded, decapitated, along with all of the 
other members of the household of the Prophet in mm -hmm. Karbala as they did with Imam al Hussein. And so then there's been since the time of the Prophet Muhammad until this very age, we, we have uh, the Muslim nation uh, going through all of this suffering, all of this poverty, all of this ignorance, all of these wars. And the reason for that suffering is because of the fact that they did not hold on to that which the Prophet left. If they would have held on to it, they would have never um, you know, been, uh, been led astray. And so we believe that we're here in the time of the 12th Imam, Muhammad ibn Hassan al-Askari And uh, he is present alongside with uh, his successors, the first three of the Mahdi's that are mentioned in the well, much like the Prophet Muhammad uh, was alive at the same time that Imam Ali and Al-Hassan al Hussein were alive. Right. The same thing is taking place over here. Uh, the 12th Imam is present along with the first three successors. Uh, which is Abdullah Ahmad and Al Mahdi. Right. And uh, we believe that uh, uh, the uh, three successors that are mentioned by name, uh, Abdullah Ahmad and Al Mahdi, that they come forward and they pave the way for uh, the, the appearance of the 12th Imam. And uh, the first of them, the first of the names of the Mahdi's is Ahmed al Hassan, and he is an individual who has claimed the will. And we believe that the second Mahdi and the third Mahdi are also present in this day and age. All right. Wow. Such a powerful uh, event that you just des described to us. And um, I, I hope that Muslims will look into it. I mean, this is not your words, the, the, the event of the Thursday, the calamity of Thursday you mentioned. It's in the Sahih books of the, the, the Sunni Muslims. And what was prevented from being written is what you've just narrated. And its gravity is that if you hold by this, you will never go astray. So if any Muslim is wondering why there are factions in Islam, why there's chaos and corruption in the religion, it's because the Muslims, unfortunately, broke away from the, the, the will of the Prophet. Yeah, exactly, Muhammad. and that's why we find that there are uh, you know, so many sects, as you mentioned, because they hold on to other people. And right. uh, so you have the Zaydis, they follow Zayd, son of Ali, who is not mentioned uh, in the will. Uh, the Ismailis, they follow Ismail, who's not mentioned uh, in the will. You have the Hanafis or the Malkis uh, mm -hmm. that are also following particular scholars or and, and being a part of that school of thought and taking their religion from them instead of those whose names were mentioned in the will. And we believe that those names that are mentioned in the will, uh, they serve as both as the premier authority in terms of religion and the authority in terms of the earth. That each and every one of them, just like uh, Jesus gave Simon Peter the keys to the heavens and the earth, that each one of those Imams and Mahdi's has with them uh, the keys to the heavens and the earth, and that they are the successors of the prophets and the messengers, and that they are the ones who were appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to rule, and that nobody has the right to rule, and nobody has the right to speak in the name of religion and in the name of God or issue any sort of religious decrees except for those particular individuals. And, and that's uh, what God made clear in the Holy Quran when he said, Verily, I'm making a caliph in the land when he appointed uh, Adam, peace and blessings be upon him. And when he appointed, when the Israelites went to uh, Samuel, the prophet, and they asked him to appoint over them a king. It was God who appoints over them the king. So God is the one who appoints the ruler. And we are the only people on the face of the planet that declare ourselves innocent from every single bid'ah, uh, innovation in religion, uh, any sort of theory or statement that was given to us by anybody other than those who were appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we also reject as uh, kings or rulers over us anybody with the exception of those who are appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are from God and we only take from the proof of God. SubhanAllah. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, thank you for bringing to light this, uh, 
this written will. And if any Muslim is uh, questioning that the Prophet, Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi the greatest of the messengers, uh, would not follow a divine injunction that's in the Quran that says, write a will. Uh, and then there is this narration which mentions that he was prevented from writing it, and then he writes it, and then he names his successors. Uh, this is surely the most important things that Muslims can pay attention to. Absolutely. This that's is why, the hadith that's of hadith. why all of the other sects are astray, and we are the only guided sect in all of Islam because and that's why we are the true Muslims and we are the true Christians and we are the true Jews and we are the 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 true followers of every single prophet and messenger because we are the only people that have held on to the supremacy of God to the will of the prophet Muhammad we're the only Muslims on the planet that are obeying the final wish and the final desire and commandment that the Prophet Muhammad gave his people. It's only us. Alhamdulillah.